I am now sponsored by SeatGeek and FanDuel. Make sure to use code BENGAL. That's code BENGAL for $20 off your first purchase on SeatGeek and $20 free to play when you sign up for FanDuel. Also, check out my Twitch for live streams, my second channel for other games. Both links are in the description. What's up, guys? Welcome back to the 7th Round Bus Podcast. We're on episode number four. Uh, to start things off, we already recorded like pretty much, I would say, like 70% of the podcast and... 28 minutes yeah and my thing froze so uh very frustrating but you guys won't know any of that because obviously it doesn't exist so Mm -hmm. um kind of redoing this so we talked a lot about all this stuff already we're just gonna quickly hit it i mean we did kind of ramble on on some of the things so oh yeah i'm sure this will be probably a shorter podcast because we're just going to brush we over didn't, things. We didn't get into the prospect breakdown, which is usually like no. the big thing anyway, so mm-hmm. that's that's fine. But uh, quick topics. Jalen Hurts transferring to Oklahoma, East-West Shrine game, AFC Championship, NFC Championship, prospect breakdowns of Josh Allen, Cleveland Furl, David Montgomery. Okay, so we talked about Jalen Hurts transferring to Oklahoma. And then just, I brought up how Tate Martell's transferring to Miami. And Justin Fields is transferring to Ohio State. And Notre Dame quarterback Brandon Wimbush is transferring to UCF. Yes. I think that's that's it. Yeah. Jalen Um, Hurts is going to be a problem for for Texas, and that's why I care. He's a game manager. And he should fit the Lincoln-Riley offense at Oklahoma pretty well. Oklahoma probably will still be very good under Jalen Hurts, even though he's no Kyler Murray from a playmaking perspective. Yeah, and then I said, oh, third straight uh, transfer quarterback that – Oklahoma is going to have maybe three straight Heismans. Probably not. Lincoln Riley offense, Big 12 defense. So, you know, it's favorable. It is favorable, but I don't see it happening. I don't think Jalen Hurts is as good as Kyler Murray or Baker Mayfield. So, yeah, but, and then, uh, then, you know, I showed like a little picture of uh, Jalen Hurts. He's already ready. He's already ready for Texas. Horns down. Horns down. I don't know (laughs) if it's going to be on the screen. It might be. Quickly throw it on the screen. So. That's that. All right. Quick, quick. We honestly we rambled on that the first time way too long. Quick hitter on Probably. that one. East West Shrine yeah. game. We'll stay on this one a little bit more just because it was there was some interesting ones. Um, Brett Rippon on his first drive, the wheel route touchdown to Nick Brosa. I thought that was a, an amazing throw by him. Great touch. Yeah, just great, great throw. And Brett Rippon, someone that we might have to look out for in the draft process. Maybe a prospect breakdown later down the line mm-hmm. on Brett Rippon. Uh, some, Boise, other players quarterback. To, some other players to add to that list. Obviously, if you guys saw the East-West Shrine game, I, I'm assuming many of you didn't, though. So we're going to yeah. act under that premise. Jordan Brailford, an, an edge player from Oklahoma State, was phenomenal. He didn't even win defensive MVP. We'll talk about that other player just in a second here. But he was incredible. In my opinion, he was the best defensive player there. Uh, he was a game wrecker. He had a fumble recovery, a couple of sacks. And his career at... Uh, Oklahoma State was short, but very good. In his last season as a true junior, I believe he had 17 tackles for loss and 10 sacks, along with two or three forced fumbles. Like That's that's pretty good production from a defensive end. So he's maybe a player we're going to have to look at further and and see what he brings to the table on a down-to-down basis for other teams. Could be a good mid-round player. Yeah, yeah, we both, we were watching the game, we both thought Jordan Brailford was the best. Uh, could, some other guys, yeah, some other guys, Ty Johnson's first drive running back out of Maryland. I thought he looked pretty good on that. Uh, Chris Johnson, the safety from earth, Alabama. He just looked like he had amazing range, six to 200 safety. So pretty, pretty big safety right there. Uh, Daniel wise from Kansas with the weird helmet made, you know, we talked about the weird helmet, but Daniel wise yeah. also had a pretty good game. And then, uh, one other guy, Malik Carney who uh, was suspended this year for four games, but he had a he beat a double monster team with season. a spin move. And I was like, whoa. And he had a monster year. I think I think you said, like, it's like six sacks, a bunch of tackles for and, losses. Yeah, a ton of forced fumbles as well. A ton of forced fumbles. Uh, and and then games. the actual MVP on the defense side of the ball, Justin Hollins, a linebacker slash D-line out of Oregon. So three, four outside linebackers, what you're thinking. He's 6'5", 240, and his production was pretty good. He had an interception this year, six and a half sacks, 14 and a half tackles for loss, five forced fumbles. So, I mean, he got a nose for the ball. That's what you can say about him. Another good good mid-round player. He's a uh, fifth-year senior out of Oregon. Could yeah. be decent. We've seen some good players uh, 
out of Oregon on the defensive line. DeForest Buckner, Eric Armstead, most recently. Kiko Maybe this Alonso. Is the next. <laughs> Loves the <to> late hits. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, no, nah, but yeah, Justin Hollins was pretty nice. And then uh, the offensive MVP, Terry Godwin. Very best uh, player there. Best player there. It's NFL scouts really like the look of him. A little bit, of, you know, not the biggest receiver, but he had a really good game. So that was uh, East West Shrine game. Any other thoughts on the East West Shrine game? I think that's probably it. Well, we want to talk on Easton Stick uh, yeah, yeah. R- briefly because he's a player that I liked a lot last year, and then this year he just hasn't really brought it. For me, he wasn't that great in the national championship. Had a bad week of practices at the East West Shrine game. Had a not so great game. It's just he's disappointing me. He really is. I thought he'd get better, as which is why I was so high on him. And I just didn't see it this year. So yeah, a little bit disappointing there. Yeah, and then uh, of course Senior Bowl is this week, and so in the next podcast we'll talk about Senior Bowl and the Super Bowl matchup too in the next pro uh in the next podcast and with the senior bowl it has like top prospects in that so um mm-hmm. it'd be a more interesting one and uh honestly if you guys you know people watching check it out watch it watch the senior bowl and see uh what stands it's out gonna for you be, guys. it's, 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 it's gonna be good, good game it's know? gonna be good so that's the uh east west shrine game now the afc championship nfc championship we'll quickly talk about these uh so nfc championship we had, you know, Saints the, got robbed, man. The the, the bottom no line, yeah. bottom line. Saints got robbed. They should be in the Super Bowl right now. And you know, if it's and if ifs and buts were coconuts, blah blah blah. If the Queen had king or had balls, she'd be king. <laughs> Whatever. Uh, like Mark's favorite. Mark's phrase. favorite saying. <laughs> it's just like you know, I think what it comes down to is a pass interference there gives the Saints a fresh set of downs. There's a minute forty left in the game. Rams only had one timeout the game would have been over provided that you make that field goal, which would have been a chip shot. 99% chance that's going in. Will Lutz like, is pretty good. Yeah. He had a good season as well. Like saints should be in the super bowl and they have every right to be salty or whatever they were. They literally were robbed. That is the worst no call I've ever seen. Yep. I, it has to be, especially given the situation, the circumstance NFC championship under two minutes to play. So close. Goes to overtime because of that, and the Saints end up losing. They should be in the Super Bowl right now, not the Rams. I don't care that the Rams are in there. I, I don't care for either team, but bottom line, I think, is that the Saints should be, and they were screwed by the refs. That's a vicious no call. Yeah, no, 100% agree. Uh, terrible. Like, you can't, like, I always, like, understand with, like, how you don't want the refs to decide the game for you but like you gotta call that you have to call Mm -hmm. that the refs just seem to not call anything in that game really Uh, a lot of no calls um you know the wwe leg drop that the saints player had multiple miss face masks but you gotta call that pass interference it's just so blatant it wasn't even close not even close the ball wasn't even close to being there so um yeah bad very very bad and uh I do feel a little bad for the Saints fans, but stuff happens. <laughs> yeah. Stuff it's, happens. It's rough. Dude, that's that's got to be the toughest way. Yeah. Well, okay. Well, I, I say like, that. <laughs> I know. Last year, I know about tough losses in championship games. Well, okay. Well, but like, but like look, that look, was look, that look was the, the Saints team. even last year with Marcus Williams kind of falling. Yeah. Stefan Diggs. That's yeah. another brutal loss. And it's like Saints, it's tough. Saints have had it tough. It's really tough for the Saints fans too because they know that Drew Brees is almost done, mm-hmm. and uh, that's two that's two seasons in a row that you know. Because honestly, I think if the Saints win that Vikings game, they definitely would have not gotten destroyed like the Vikings did against the Eagles. So you never know. It would have been it would have been a different. Would have been it would have been a, a different uh, season for sure. Maybe the Eagles maybe don't no make Foles the Super magic. Bowl. Yeah, maybe no fool's magic. It, wow. I mean, a lot of different implications if one thing happened. You know, the butterfly effect. Yep. One thing leads to the next, leads to the next, leads to the next, and everything is altered completely. It's a fun thing to think about. Yeah. But I think, I think bottom line, again, I, I love to say that, but this is going to be one of the last times Drew Brees has a shot at the Super Bowl. And back-to-back years in a row, 
probably should have been there. And this one more egregious, I would say, than last year. The Saints absolutely should be in the Super Bowl. It's not like they screwed up. This is out of their hands. Mm-hmm. Tougher Drew Brees. What do you think? Does he suit up next year? I think. <sighs> See, he started Final a pretty year, good maybe? year. He started pretty. I think you gave it one more oh, shot. Yeah. One more mm-hmm. shot. Well, it's on him, you know. Yeah, I think Drew Brees gives it one more shot. Uh, what do you think about this, though? Do they? Uh, do you think? Well, I, I, they're already looking over it, but pass interference is reviewable calls now. Got to be right. <sighs> they got to like honestly, I, they I, should I, review as many plays as they can at this point. Yeah, it slows down the so game. Bad. It does slow down the game, but I, I'll say this though. Um, I think penalties sh- maybe should be reviewable, but I think via uh, like a coach's challenge. And and maybe you have you have one a game yeah. or something like that because I don't want to see, you know, they go review every single pass interference and then when you slow it down everything looks worse than it is. Mm-hmm. So I mean, like in the Chiefs Patriots game, the roughing the passer that clearly wasn't uh, from Chris Jones, and then the pass interference that didn't get called that was. I think yeah, those ones should be reviewable because if you're the coaches of either side, if you're Andy Reid or if you're Sean Payton, you're throwing the flag there to review the challenge or review the penalty. So yeah. I think give give the coaches two challenge flags. <laughs> well, like one for one, one blue, one red. I don't I don't know, but I think the coaches should challenge it. They should get one a game, uh, and if they get it correct, they get to keep it. So I like that. Same way challenges work now. I like that. Now there's the other thing that that was under two minutes, so could they even challenge it? You know. <laughs> yeah, that's but, that's another good point. But uh, yeah, that's uh, this it's bad. That was bad. And then AFC Championship, you mentioned the uh, the rough in the passer. We, <laughs> we literally they literally call rough in the passer just because he threw his arms down at him trying to swat the mm. ball or so. I don't even know, but like such a ridiculous call. And then uh, we did we did see the Brady, you know touchdown two-minute drill where he, mm-hmm. he looked on the side you just saw him on the sideline after the Chiefs score and he's ready he's ready to go but then we saw Mahomes magic after that to tie the game up and then uh yep Brady didn't give the ball back you didn't give the best offense in the NFL a shot the NFL playoff rules are dumb I think uh so I saw some people say they should do college rules, and I disagree with that. I, I don't agree with that. I think what needs to happen is everyone is teams get a possession each. Yeah, I just agree. don't just don't let it end on a touchdown. Just let mm-hmm. one possession each, and that's it. Be simple, super simple. So, so there still is the benefit of winning the coin toss. Yep, because you decide, you know, two point conversion or whatever. But I mean, what if you, what if you tie, you play d- double overtime now? Yep. Yeah. So uh, it's just, yeah. I mean, hey, Brady's back in the Super Bowl, ninth Super Bowl, I think it is. <laughs> insane, absolutely insane. Uh, but we'll talk more about the Super Bowl in the ni- next podcast. We have the Pro Bowl this week. We don't care about the Pro Bowl, so yeah, <laughs> we'll talk about Super Bowl and the Senior Bowl in the next podcast. So yeah, those were the quick hitters. Honestly, we kind of touched on everything that we talked about before. We just didn't ramble on some stuff. So let's get a prospect breakdown. All right, who do you want to start with? Let's go Josh Allen first. Josh Allen. I'd like to take the uh Go ahead. The the lead on this, which you have is the floor. That, yeah, I okay. So I like Josh Allen. I do. I still think he's a really good player. I don't really find him to be an edge rusher. So when I see everyone like freaking out at me for oh he didn't mock josh allen to the 49ers at two or to whoever now the jets are in a 4-3 josh allen is not a 4-3 defensive end i think at all i know he's a size he's 6'5 260 but he doesn't play like that it's he's just he's just not a pure edge rusher to me because like first of all he doesn't really utilize pass rush moves ever I, i i don't want to say ever but he doesn't utilize them enough his hands are average, and um, he does have some good pass rush moves when he utilizes them, but I, I really don't see him as an every-down 4-3 defensive end. I almost say that he's a, a more typical 4-3 outside linebacker. I don't know if that's going too far, but he reminds me of Anthony Barr. I know you guys probably already uh, see that if you're watching the prospect breakdown on the channel, but in the podcast, he reminds me of Anthony Barr. I think someone that was 
what Josh Allen was at uh, at Kentucky and then moved to the NFL and then became more of a 4-3 outside linebacker because he's pretty good in coverage. But I think his hands are average. And I think even though he does have some good pass rush moves, he, he never uses them. He uses them so sparingly that are they good because he's just throwing them out there randomly or are they good because they're actually good? So I think he has good speed. I think he reads a quarterback well. I think he's pretty fluid in coverage, not exceptional. He's a big guy, but, you know, pretty good in coverage, shoots gaps well, uh, and he's good at holding the edge as well. And his hands are strong sometimes in run defense, but I think he has way too many cons to be a regular 4-3 defensive end. He goes to this bull rush all the time. It's terrible. His, he goes for the spin sometimes. He gets pushed down. Very inconsistent as a pass rusher, and he doesn't utilize his pass rush moves nearly often enough. He tries to win with athleticism more so than technique, and that doesn't really work in the NFL. We've seen that with Jadavian Clowney. He was just a monster at South Carolina because of his athleticism, strength, speed, and then he went to the NFL, and he's kind of figuring out what to do. And I know he's getting better now, so I'm not saying that Josh Allen can't be a great player on the edge, but I don't see him as that now at all. He watches a lot. I'm like, buy tickets to the game if you want to stand around and watch. He, he doesn't play with a high motor, I don't think. Um, and his his hands are average. He talked about that a little bit. I don't think his physicality is there to be a 4-3 defensive end. I just don't. Yeah, um, definitely agree on a lot of things there. Uh, what I just saw is that he's not in the senior bowl, which is kind of disappointing because I was at, I was thinking that, you know, would love to see him in the senior bowl. He's not in is the senior he not? bowl. I just looked at it six days ago. He said that he's going to sit out the senior bowl. Mm, of course he does. So uh, it, it really, I, I don't like that at all. Um, like you said, he has good pass rush moves when he uses them. He just doesn't I, use them that much. But I almost wonder if they're only good because of how sparingly he uses <laughs> yeah. them. Like if, if Dwight Freeney did a spin move every play, his spin isn't going to be very good because they're going to expect it every time. Right. So when you're expecting bull rush and, and, and just speed around the edge, and then he actually comes with a good inside swim or push pull, rip around. I I don't I don't know I don't I don't know. That's what it comes down to. It, when he's not using them as much, it's hard to see if they're going to be good on a consistent basis. And this is not me trashing him. I think he's a really good player. He's still yeah. going to be a top twenty five player on my big board for sure. But I just don't see him as a top five player in the class. I don't see him. Maybe it's a top ten player. So I think if if NFL teams kind of see the same thing. This is a player that isn't going to get drafted as high because he, to me, isn't a 4-3 defensive end, at least not right now. He doesn't play with enough physicality to his size, and even though he's a good athlete, I don't think the technique is there, and I think I think that's a big problem. It's it's Clowney versus Khalil Mack, and he's more of a, a Clowney, but he's less athletic, less athletic, and I don't think he has the technique of a Khalil Mack that made him so good and has made him so good. He he's a he's a question mark for me. I think a first round talent, uh, but I, definitely not top five for me. I definitely not top five. Yeah, I think uh, I think he's definitely a first rounder. I don't I don't have him in the top ten for me right now. Um, it, it's it's weird. He has I I think outside linebacker is where he would be best because he mm-hmm. does have good coverage and good play rec and all that. He he reads the quarterback a lot. Um, he holds the edge well. It's just, it doesn't seem like it, he, he almost has the, for me, because I remember being an absolute monster in some games. It's like the, uh, what is it? The Mandela effect where you like yeah, remember you, things that didn't happen. That's almost mm-hmm. what it was with Josh Allen with me because we're watching the Florida tape. I'm like, I remember him being absolutely dominant in that game. And he had like a few plays here or there, but he wasn't like that dominant as what I remembered. So I think he's a guy that makes splash plays and yeah. makes you remember him. But he, on a down-to-down basis, he kind of disappears sometimes. Yeah, and we and, saw that a lot. And like the big thing is like he likes to like his, sometimes his effort is questionable. Where he, he would be standing around sometimes, and he likes to watch a lot, which mm-hmm. isn't good. So uh, he's fast. He's a fast guy. Yeah. It, 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 a lot of the things, a lot of the issues with him is coachable. I would say where you know if you do want to make him a pass rusher you, you have to coach him up on that but i think outside linebacker like you said four three outside linebacker who can uh, rush the passer who can rush is almost a fit for him 
Honestly, for me, I wouldn't mind him seeing as an inside linebacker either because I think he can play inside linebacker, but I think outside linebacker. He has linebacker. some crazy size. Yeah, he'd be, he'd be huge for an inside linebacker. Guy. He'd be like, huge for an inside linebacker. But I don't know if I like this, but I almost want to call him a tweener where he's in between defensive end and linebacker. We'll have to see how he tests, I think. Mm-hmm. 10-yard split is going to be really important in the 40-yard dash. I want to see his agility and that side-to-side lateral movement. Uh, so I want to see how he does in these drills. He's going to be running with the defensive lineman. I would have to guess, but I, I don't know. And then I want to see three cone. I want to see how quick he is because that's something that's sometimes difficult to uh, to see on tape. Uh, not always, but with a player like him, I think it was. I like him. I, I think people are going to hear this and think that I'm bashing on him, but it's not that. I'm just a little bit disappointed based on when you watch the games as a fan versus, you know, analyzing the tape and really looking at him exclusively, trying to see what he does. And, you know, you watch the games and you're all oh, game record. And then you watch the tape and you're like, where's the hype? Why, where's it coming from? I don't, I don't know. I like him. I think he's a first round talent. I think his versatility is his strongest asset, but he's got to utilize these pass rush moves more often. And he needs, to, he needs to develop them more as well. It, it's concerning to me as well that he's sitting out the senior bowl. It's almost like he's saying, Hey, my stock is as high as it's going to be. I don't want to, do anything to uh to lower that so uh, is he even going to perform at the combine you don't you don't know yeah that was uh that that was the biggest surprise that i just saw so uh we'll see what happens josh allen it's just i would have loved to see him that senior bowl because if he had a big senior bowl he would have really solidified that you know he should be top 10 or whatever but definitely first rounder i I honestly don't see him dropping out of the top 20 he could, no. he could, but I don't think he will drop out of top twenty. Just I would, because he, I would doubt he with is, all the hype that he's got, he's so a far. physical beast, and he's got the hype. It's just on tape, like when we're watching, we're just like, ah, he has a, underwhelmed, a little underwhelming, but he's still a monster, an absolute monster. All right, we'll move on to the next guy. Uh, another, uh, honestly, a top five prospect, almost Cleland Furl from Clemson, mm-hmm. six four, maybe six five, two sixty five redshirt junior just oh, first thing that when me and bangor were watching the team the first thing that stood out his unreal explosion off the line it was there was a play that we like it was like one of the first plays we watched where he, his like explosion off the line was ridiculous so ridiculous that one of the other clemson players was still in a hadn't stance moved. he austin, hasn't austin moved bryant on, on the left edge had not had moved furl was already <laughs> A engaging. body length or two <laughs> beyond the line of scrimmage. He was engaging with the tackle already. Yeah. <laughs> like, like his, by the time the quarterback got the ball step. in his hands. You can't even call it a first step because it's like five. <laughs> like, it was insane. His explosion, his burst off the line is as good as I've seen from any was, prospect. Yeah, that was the first it's thing that came unbelievable. out. We're like, whoa. <laughs> we paused that. We're like, whoa, what was that? That was crazy. Uh, he's good in two, three, or four point stance. Like it doesn't matter. He's good either way. We, doesn't give up it, on plays. The four point was rare. That was yeah, more yeah. like you know pure run stuffing situations. But he's good in that as well. The mm-hmm. thing that confuses me the most about the draft process so far, you know, guys always get prospects wrong, myself included at times, I'm sure. But like the fact that Josh Allen's getting all this hype as an edge rusher and people don't really like Cleveland Furl is mind-boggling to me. Yeah, Mind-boggling. Yeah, Because he looks about as elite of a prospect as you can get. Yeah. And I think it's it's unfortunate for Cleveland Furl that he's not considered the best edge rusher in this class. It's because of Nick Bosa, I mm-hmm. think. Because he, he is incredible. Yeah. Uh, and on, maybe it kind of hurts him that that Clemson D-line was so good all around, too. But people that, people say that, and then you watch the tape, and you're like, "Oh, yeah, you gotta Furl's watch the, the one getting double teamed all the time, and yep. he's still finding ways to win." Yep. He's it, just... We talked about the explosion. His his hands are very strong, and he mm-hmm. does have a good array, array of pass rush moves. The problem with him, I would say, if you had to find one with that, is that he doesn't utilize them all the time because he's so fast <laughs> off the edge that he just wins with athleticism. Yeah. But when you see the pass rush moves, they are good, and this is kind of like. Uh, contradictory to what I was saying about Josh Allen, but Josh Allen doesn't have the same explosiveness. Um, And Cleveland Furl's rip is fantastic. Mm -hmm. He does have a really, really quick spin move 
yeah. almost never goes to it, which is why it's so good. Has a good swipe, uh, and he loves to hold down the arms of the tackle with one arm. Oftentimes, he'll work that left off the right edge, that left arm, mm-hmm. into a straight arm where he just even holds down the tackle's inside hand, inside arm, and just just gets to the quarterback. Super strong. Um Decent edge bender as well. Nothing to write home about in that regard. He's no Nick Bosa, but he's decent in that uh, category. Good container of the edge, and he holds his responsibility well. And he's good against double teams. People are talking about uh, in my comments section. Who was it? Jalen Ferguson. I'm like, he he doesn't do that well against double teams. Well, Cleveland Furl's is a guy who does. And you're not looking for even a ratio of, of 20% of the time they're winning against double teams, usually, because it's tough to beat a double team. But Furl's split a bunch when we were watching him on a tape he's just so fast and so quick that he can do that only cons i have for him i think he plays a little bit too tall in run defense so that's a leverage issue uh, and he can get overpowered at times when defending the run also not really a cover guy he's the, the awkward in coverage which i kind of takes away his ability to be uh, a versatile three four outside linebacker but i think he can do that as an every down edge rusher you look at what von miller brings to the table uh, sometimes his angles to the ball carrier are a little bit weird, a little bit inconsistent, and uh, I'd like him to finish tackles more often. But I think he's a guy that's going to test pretty well, uh, and he's probably best suited as a 4-3 defensive end or a 3-4 outside linebacker that just is a pure pass rusher. I think he's a top five talent in the class easily. Yeah. Probably uh, will go top 15. Yeah, yeah. He's uh, just that tape was unbelievable watching him. Uh, the big thing, like you said, is the like the swipe and holding down the arms of mm-hmm. the tackle. That's, I think, his best move that he has because he yeah, is a super strong fantastic. player. He's a super strong player. He can The swim move works for him, too, to the inside that we saw a lot when he likes to go inside. And then uh, because he's so fast, he, ha- he likes the, uh, the quick step outside to inside mm-hmm. to get the tackles off balance. He likes that. He likes doing that a lot. So really like his pass rushing move. I don't, as you mentioned, he's not comfortable in coverage. He doesn't look. He looks super. We saw it a couple of times. He was moved all over the field at Clemson. Yeah. They because of the you know who they had Christian Wilkins, um, Austin Bryant is kind of not that great. Dexter but, Lawrence. Uh, Dexter Lawrence at the inside. They moved everybody around to every position. Yeah. And and Furl's a guy that moved inside at times. They had him at like inside linebacker in yeah. double A gap situations, and they had him on the outside linebacker and coming off the edge and moving inside to three four defensive end. He was fantastic at like you know four tech five tech, all the way you know like to the, basically the nine technique off the tight end. Like he he can come from every different location and do so at a really high level. Could you figure out a comparison you like for him? I didn't really figure out a comparison for him. It, yeah, it's kind of uh, weird. I like Miles Garrett a little bit just because yeah. big burst, big Miles athleticism, Garrett's similar in size. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I, I don't. You know, when you come up with comparisons, it's, it's not an exact it's never science. 100%, yeah. Uh, it can't be. Some of them you do see. It's like, oh wow, this is like I'm watching the same player. But uh, I think Miles Garrett is close enough. You talk about really good athleticism. I'm not sure mm-hmm. that Furl is going to test as well, but. Uh, on tape, I think they look pretty similar. And that that first step, that burst off the line, that explosion, unbelievable. Very excited <laughs> to see with his 10-yard split in the 40-yard oh, yeah. dash because it's going to be so fast. It's just... I, he might even run faster than 4.6. He might be in, like, the low 4.5s with that. He also could run, like, 4.7 or something. You know, you can never know with defensive ends sometimes, sometimes, because explosiveness doesn't always carry over to good straight line speed over a distance. Mm-hmm. But if, he, if, he, if it does, Wow. He's going to be fast as hell. His 10-yard his split is going to be unbelievable. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I, like, yeah, it's going to be a top five for, like, the deep defensive line or have, whatever. You'd have to it say has so. to be. It has to be. It's so good. Uh, yeah, I have elite pass rusher with great burst. Should definitely play DN in the NFL or just, like, a pass rusher in general. Edge, edge rusher. Edge rusher. Yeah. Um, and then I have – he's a top five prospect for me. And he's going to get drafted at least in the top 10, like somewhere in the top 10. I don't, he's not going to escape the top 10, in my opinion. Or he shouldn't, anyways. He so. shouldn't. He, he should, should not. not. He's a top five prospect for me. Should not escape the top 10. He's incredible. Absolutely incredible. So, Cleland Furl. And then the last guy we got, David Montgomery, junior running back from Iowa State, 5'11, 216, 215, 216 mm-hmm. is what I have him listed at. And, um, I'll, you know, I'll start with this one. So I think he's a quick player. He's not like 
a super fast player, not straight he's, line he's fast. He's not fast. He's he not, isn't fast. Yeah, he's not. <laughs> he's not straight line fast, but he's quick. He got. He has the quick cuts, quick moves. Can make people miss, and that's a, that's something that we saw a lot. Is he can make people miss, hits holes pretty well, and he's also not afraid to cut back. So you know he'll run to the left. Some or the play will be to the left, but he'll cut it back to the right. Uh, he's not afraid to do that. The first contact, and this is where like the big thing with him is, is the first contact. He wins that first contact a lot. Every time. So even though his comparison to Saquon Barkley is not at all, mm -hmm. Saquon Barkley is the same trait of doesn't get tackled in one-on-one -on -one situations yep. the first guy ever, pretty much. He breaks David Montgomery a lot of tackles. Never does as well. Breaks same thing. a lot of tackles. He's, he's, I think he, he led the FBS in missed tackles. Or yeah. Force yeah. Tackles. No. Yeah. 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 I think. I think it was that. Big. Big. Uh, breaks tackles a lot, and he's a big yards after contact guy. Like he will oh, turn yeah. losses, like two, three yard losses, into like six yard gains. So mm -hmm. big yards after contact, yards after contact guy, catches with the ball pretty well too. Runs decent routes. Not nothing too special, but you know it is something that he can do, and I think he is a pretty good pass blocker too. Um, like we mentioned, not very fast in open field. Probably four six forty, like yeah. not very fast. Uh, high, but high four five at the best, yeah. probably. But uh, for me, third, uh, he is a three down back in the NFL because of his pass blocking abilities. His pass blocking is unbelievable. Like he, like yeah, I didn't mention it, like talk about it too much, but he is a pretty good pass blocker. Like I, I, I put great pass blocker on my yeah. thing. So uh, three down back, and then. The comparison I have, so I don't really do comparisons too much, but I do have a comparison for him, and it's basically because of the similar style of a running back, and it is uh, Le'Veon Bell. I don't think he's mm -hmm. as patient as Le'Veon Bell, but looking at the also, tape, not a, not a, the athlete, yeah, not as athlete. maybe isn't there as yeah. well. But you know, Le'Veon Bell also isn't isn't a guy who's like super fast, but he'll mm -hmm. make people miss, and uh, you know, pa good pass blocker too. So Le'Veon Bell is kind of where, where I thought he would be. Um, Second round talent might fall to, you know, anywhere from three to five, two to two to five or something. So yeah, I, I, I like the second I round talent him. as well. I like um, him a lot. I, he shouldn't. He really shouldn't fall past the fifth round. I see a lot of guys not having him as a top five running back or top ten running back in this class, even which seems unbelievable to me. He is RB two, and he was my running back number one until I checked out Josh Jacobs. <laughs> um, you didn't, you didn't really touch on it, but his balance is unbelievable. Mm. It kind of goes with yards after contact. Very, very elusive, uh, and he's super, super strong. Good hands, and he is a three down back, and his, he gets in and out of his cuts so quickly. Yeah. The only real problem I have with him is his straight line speed, but also the fact that it he'll sometimes try to bounce outside, like you see Saquon Barkley do often, but... He doesn't have the speed He's to do that, fast enough for that on a consistent basis. So he will run into some trouble there when he does try to bounce a bunch out. I'm sure that worked great for him in high school. But you know, he just doesn't have the speed to do so uh, even in the Big 12 at Iowa State. And I imagine he'll not be able to do that in the NFL even worse. But that tackling ability that or the ability to force missed tackles is still going to be there. I think he's really, really good. RB2 in the class for me. And his comparison to me is a bigger Kareem Hunt. He's same height, Kareem Hunt, 5'11", but he's also he got 15 pounds on him. But that elite balance and ability to, to uh, force missed tackles that Kareem Hunt showcased at Toledo, well, this is even more impressive from a guy who's doing it in a way better conference. So I think David Montgomery's fantastic, very, very quick, although he's not fast, very strong. He's a player that I, I think is going to be very good. So I'm excited to see where he goes. Yeah, I, I liked him a lot. Like I, I didn't, you know, I didn't watch too many Iowa State games this year. So uh, when we were watching the tape, I was like, "Wow, this guy, he ain't fast, but he's not afraid of contact, and he he wins a lot of the the contacts." So um, I really liked him. I really liked David Montgomery, and he'd be a good. And it seems like running backs in you know third round lately, third third round and after. That gets drafted in the third round or after Hunt, lately has been Camara. very yeah. good. So, um, yeah, I think that's where he's going to fall, and should be interesting to see what team picks him up because I I really like him. I, I'd say he's probably RB two for me right now too. Definitely top five running back in the class. Let me ask you this. Yep, we're only thirty five minutes into this recording. Do you want to throw in another 
for the people. Yeah, I mean, we already got another guy, you know, broken down, right? We already yep. watched a tape on another guy. So, yeah, let's do it. Let's throw a fourth guy in here. Special special treat because we uh, screwed up the first time. So, it's a little bit shorter of a podcast. This is going to be the shortest one that we come out with. It's going to be like 40 or so minutes uh, at the most. But uh, Devin White, yes. inside linebacker, maybe, out of LSU, 6'1", 240. Wow. Um I'm gonna this, piss people off. I this love it, this was an interesting one. This is along the lines of the Josh Allen, where we're like, Ugh. this he was, was a this bit one, underwhelming. One, yeah, like yeah. Obvi- he has an in- he has a ton of pros. He mm-hmm. also has a ton of cons. I think a big reason for that is that this is a guy that was recruited to LSU as a running back, that is translated into being an inside linebacker exclusively. I don't think he's ever taken a snap at running back. I could be wrong about that, but this is a guy that's been. Uh, linebacker throughout his entire career at LSU, even though he's recruited as a running back. And he's a stud. Incredible talent. He's gotten better every single year of his career at LSU, and that probably will continue as he really continues to learn the position going into the NFL. A couple of pros. Phenomenal speed. Really, really amazing athlete. And because of that, he's got that sideline-to-sideline range. And he's really good in coverage. He's instinctive. He has clean hips. And his play recognition is fantastic so for a for an inside linebacker that's great here's where we get some some problems um he can't shed blocks really at all like at all it it was it was so weird to see because it was time and time again against wide receivers against tight ends against running backs not even to mention when a guard or tackle or center would come up to the next level to block him this is a this is a guy who cannot shed a block for anything which is is deeply concerning. I think that's a technique issue because he has a size to be able to do so. He's a big guy at 6'1", 240, probably going to move up to 250 pounds at some point. So, I mean, he's got the size. It's just technique, learning the position. Uh, he over-pursues as well. Part of that, I mean, a lot of this is just like not knowing the position as well as he could. He's not a great inside blitzer, and they use him as a blitzer a lot, and you didn't really see him get home very often, at least not with technique. When he was blocked, it, that way he was blocked. I mean, that's pretty much the end of it. Um, although you saw a couple plays on maybe maybe three of the blitzes we saw at a, like 15, 20, or 25. He did show off some edge bend, which was which was interesting because he's not an edge rusher. So, I mean, just the natural ability there is, is interesting to look at. Very inconsistent tackler for me. And he had a ton of tackles at LSU, but he also missed a bunch. Some of that is because of his inconsistent angles, uh, but we talked about it with the blocking. It's overpowered by any position, and I think another issue is he's out of position a lot. He doesn't really hold his responsibility well, uh, and he still is really raw. He was recruited as a running back, talked about that, and I don't think he's really a Mike linebacker right now. I think he's probably an outside guy in a 4-3. He just doesn't have the traits of an inside linebacker to me other than great range. I think his ideal fit is probably on the outside, He's, he's an interesting player with super high upside, but he's another guy that isn't a top five talent to me anymore. I think he's probably like Deion Jones was, so raw, but great potential. Yep, yeah. This was uh, another one where watching the tape, we're just like, ah, I don't, I don't see it. Uh, the, the weirdest thing was the blitzing. He blitzed a lot, <laughs> and he did absolutely nothing on those blitzes. And I, I just don't think you should blitz him. Like, don't even... I think it's uh, pointless to blitz him. He's fast, though. He's super fast. Sideline to sideline speed is incredible. Great coverage. Uh, the tackling, it, it just seems like he would never really learned how to tackle, which mm-hmm. c- kind of comes along with the fact that he played running back three years ago. <laughs> right? So, and that's coachable. Tackling's coachable. Yeah. Um, And all that. So, uh, the over pursuing, I think that that just has to do with that, that he's just so fast that he doesn't know how to pursue players. Doesn't so. have to break down. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I like him as a physical guy, like a physical player. He's or the his, physical his traits, physical, physical attributes traits, are yeah, off the charts. Yeah, they're incredible, and that's why I understand why he's so hyped up because you know physically, physical wise, you, can, you can't coach good. that. Yeah, right. Yeah, you can't coach that. Uh, the a lot of the a lot of stuff that the a lot of the negatives right now, you can coach up. I do agree that he, I don't think he's a Mike linebacker right now, mainly because he just doesn't tackle well. Uh, Sam or Will linebacker is where I have him at, and I think you'd do pretty well out there just because he can cover. He has a speed to cover. He has a speed to and keep up with He's really receivers. good at, like, like uh, fundamentally from a coverage standpoint. 
we talked about the clean hips and mm-hmm. and good uh, real like recognition of yep. what's going to happen. Reads the quarterback well. I think if there's one thing you could say about Devin White is all of his real issues are very coachable. So he does have a super high ceiling, and he's already pretty good right now. I would say the only thing is, and it's a bit of a question mark, is how coachable is he? Because you could say, oh, all those are really easily coachable, but if he do- if he doesn't learn, doesn't want to, doesn't really, you know, take what you learn in practice and apply it into the game. If that, what's his floor? Kind of maybe kind of low, but his athleticism is fantastic. He's got to learn how to shed blocks and, and break down and tackle. If if you know, he does that. Easily a top five player in this draft, but he doesn't have it right now. I, I can't call him a top five talent. I think he's a first round player that will go in the first round. I think his talent's there. He's got to he's, he's got to get coached up a bit. Yeah, and uh, from what I've seen, he's very well liked at LSU. So um, you you should be you, you know linebacker inside linebacker. That's where you're going to be. Got to be a team leader. Being mm-hmm. well liked at LSU, that's a good sign that he's gonna be a good team leader. So uh I have him I have written down that he's round one through two. I, I kind of disagree with myself on the round two thing. I don't think he's gonna escape the round one just because mm-hmm. of the potential. He has such high potential. Top five potential yeah. easily. Yeah, he has such high potential and he's got the physical attributes to play in the NFL that mm-hmm. yeah, first round and uh we'll see what happens with him. Uh is he in the senior I don't think he's in the senior bowl, right? Yeah, he's a junior. Oh, yeah, he is a junior. So, you know, combine, I would love to see his combine numbers, his 40. Give me a projected his, 40 uh, right now. Oh, yeah, I don't know. He was so fast. I, I, it has to be 4 or 5. It has to be. You're set 4 or 5 flat? Like low 4 give me, 5. Give me, give me exact. 4 5 3. 4 5 2. 4 5 2, I'll go with. I'm going to say he touches 4 4. I'm going to give him 4 4 8. He's fast. He's a very Dar- fast. Darren player. Lee ran like four four six a couple years ago, right? I think so. Linebacker yeah. out of Ohio yeah. State, Jets. Yeah. Now that you mention that, he could. Yeah. I'm gonna say four five I mean, flat. I'm gonna I'm gonna, I'm gonna go four, four five. I'm flat. gonna go four four eight. Book it. So, well, I'll, I'll, you know, Price is Right rules. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so I would love to see those numbers and his uh the the cone drill numbers too. I would love to see all that. So, uh, Devin White. The potential is definitely there with him. Just, you know, we'll see what happens if he gets coached up. So we'll see where he goes. But, uh, yeah. I think that's going to do it. I think that's going to that's gonna be it. Uh, as always, in the comments. Oh, um, yeah, we comments. Yeah. It, oh, yeah, you, you could pull up we the comments. We didn't even do that. Yeah, pull, pull up right, the comments real quick. But, uh, yeah, as always, let us know what prospects you guys want us to look at next. In the, uh, in the next podcast, these are all the guys that we've already broken down now, so we need, kind of need to find more. We still have a lot of the quarterbacks to go over, so that could be one thing. Uh, a lot of, you know, There's so many D linemen, and the, the defense in general in this class is pretty good. So just let us know who you guys want to check out or yeah, want us to look at with the tape, and we will do that. Also, one thing that we should have probably mentioned at the beginning, the podcast is now available on iTunes, Spotify, and oh, Google yeah, Play. about that. <laughs> All the links are in the oh, description down too? below to that. I'm sure you're going to oh, put yeah. in the description. So, yeah, yeah Google Play, be. iTunes, Spotify. They're all there. Hit subscribe on that. And once I upload that that feed, it should get updated pretty instantly. So, you know, I know some people were wondering about that. It is available on those platforms. So, there you go. You got any comments, viewer comments? I do. I do. All right. I hearted this one, which meant I guess I thought it was good. Um, <laughs> could you talk about the changing values of positions in the NFL? This is from Math Chad. Why are so safeties so undervalued right now? Are there enough QBs to go around? Will inside linebackers finally get paid in free agency after the effect and success certain rookie linebackers have had on the league? Hmm. What do you think? That's an interesting one. <laughs> safety and running, running backs are super undervalued as well. So I think, yeah, I think uh, safeties being undervalued is an interesting. It just seems like... Uh... I don't know that that's true. I don't true. know if that's true. I just think that it's it. not a super exciting position because we've seen, obviously, edge rushers is that position on the defense that's really, really highly valued yep. right now. And it's because it changes games. And on, on offense, it's it's tackle, wide receiver, quarterback, pretty much. I don't know. It's, it's interesting. Um, will inside linebackers finally get paid in free agency? Like, if there are good ones, yeah, but uh, this class isn't, particularly special outside of like cj mosley who might not even be a 
able to test free agency if he gets tagged by the Ravens or signs a big new contract with them. He needs to be re-signed. He needs to be re-signed. Yeah, at safety, oh, I'm trying to think. Like, I mean, you kind of, they kind of, I don't know if they're undervalued. I mean, a lot of the safeties could play like slot corner, which is like a very important position nowadays. So, yeah, I don't think they're that undervalued. Uh, enough quarterback. There's never enough quarterbacks to go around. Let's be real. There never is. So let's see here. Yeah, um, um, it's an interesting question though. It's a, a lot of these questions are contingent upon like prospects that we'll get to. Like, can you guys rank the top ten players from every position coming to the draft, or maybe top five if ten is too much? But we got to You got to see that first. Yeah, we'll we do that later. Look on. at all those players. So that's probably something that happens uh, beginning of April. Yeah, closer maybe to draft we'll get time. we'll get more of a solidified rankings. Mm-hmm. Um, people are screaming for Iowa State receiver Hakeem Butler. Probably add him to the list okay. for a while. Um, who is the most overrated quarterback in the league? Not named Deshaun Watson. I assume he means Deshaun. Most overrated quarterback. Mm-hmm. Uh, Dak Prescott. I'm going to go, people will know he's trash now. I'm going to go Derek Carr. All right. Let's see here. Um, the uh, poster in the back is back to uh, the tape doesn't really hold well. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, yeah, it seems like a lot of it's like, you know, guys wanting certain players. Yeah. Crossfit breakdowns. A lot of, if you guys have any more, so. like, actual real questions. Yeah. Uh, d- especially, know. you know, with – the uh what happened in the championship games like what do you guys think about you know certain rule changes or something like that just anything just any other questions uh, obviously we like the prospect breakdown suggestions but also throw out some other questions that we could talk about in this section of the podcast all right i think that will do it yep and uh yeah this is a good podcast it, it kind of sucks that we lost the uh first it, 28 minutes but then again we kind of we kind of it was quicker there was less fluff and more actual content maybe you could say so it's not like we missed anything we kind of we pretty much talked just, about everything we that just we did talked it about you know, like like 13 little, minutes less than the previous time yeah a little bit quicker this time but yeah um if you're watching this on video you know hit that like button hit subscribe leave the comments if you're watching this on itunes google play or spotify make sure you guys leave a you know nice little five star rating or something like that that'd be very nice really you guys it. all better go into the comments that, or description wherever it is i think the pin comment is timestamps, and the description is uh, iTunes, Spotify, whatever. You better go, and you better rate it, and leave a nice review, and I will uh, I'll love, love, you you forever. Forever. <laughs> love you forever. Yeah, love you forever. All right, thanks, guys, for watching. Hope you enjoy, and see you in the next one. Goodbye. Take it easy.